Hello everyone and welcome to the collections video. Hello my friends, I hope all is well. As you can see, I barely fit on the table uh, because today we will be talking about the collections video which pretty much is a collection of my personal shoes. There's actually a few more than you, that you can see on the table because I couldn't fit them all here, but we will talk about each one of them individually. Now, it took me a while to find you know, the time to do all this, uh, mainly because I have way too many shoes, and secondly, because I am preparing to move to Italy next month. So I have a lot of personal things to you know, take care of. But after we settled there, there's gonna be a lot of awesome content coming up. In any case, in today's video, I'm going to focus on just showing you what I have, uh, pretty much how, how, why, and you know, how is it holding up, and if there is something that I would change, or you know, something that I'm satisfied or not with them. And also, I will show you a few that are currently for sale, uh, very few of them, as I'm trimming my collection towards the higher end. And that's about it. So what we're going to do now is going to do the classic close-up and talk about each shoe individually. So let's get going. It's time to begin. And what I will do is I will work myself from you know the bottom part, let's say, to the more entry-level shoes towards the more high-end, or at least I will try because I have a lot of shoes. First of all, I will begin with uh, the only, you know, zip boot and different style I have in my collection and uh, one of them that is actually for sale. So let's begin. This is a pair of triple monk boots with a zipper from a Chinese brand called Sie Shoes. And as far as I remember this retail for around 300 US dollars or something like this, maybe less if it's uh, during sales. And uh, actually, how I ended up having this pair is my good friend Mike Baldinger, uh, MB Shoe Dog. You might have seen him here on YouTube or uh, on Instagram. If not, you should. And uh, he got these shoes for a review, or like sort of an unboxing, and he liked them, but they were a bit too big for him, so he sent it to me. And they fit me quite well. I actually ended up liking these quite a lot. I wear them, uh, or I wore them, quite a bit. And I've been surprised how well they overall be holding up. And you can see in general there is a lot of patina development here. And, you know, for having worn them, I don't know, maybe 30 times, 20 times, uh, the creasing and the leather is holding up quite well. And you see a bit more wear on the sole but still nothing in the middle and it still has a lot of wear uh, left in it. Now, if you take a look very closely at the shoe, at the boot, uh, first of all, really nice soft square last and these tend to fit narrow, so this is a UK 8.5 and, and will fit you perfectly if you are a UK 8, unless you have a really, really, you know, large fit. I really like that it has the zipper because it's fully functional and it functions pretty much as a slip-on so while these are sort of decorative uh, you can still open them if you really want to uh, but really all you do is slip on uh, slip in and out uh, very fast very quickly they're quite comfortable my only problem was that uh, after a long day outside Maybe I will get some pinching here at the toe, at uh, the little toe area, when my feet expand. Uh, for a full price, uh, these are, uh, I don't know, uh, you can probably do better in the quality department, uh, or at least in details department. Uh, you can see that overall the weld is really good, but at the back, for example, even though it's not a 360 weld, uh, the, uh, how to say, the heel block here is not as tightly you know, uh, as tight as you would see in another more, uh, you know, established brand. And uh, another thing that bothered me was that uh, this is a blatant copy in design from uh, Setium Largeur, 
and their Tobar uh, triple monk boots uh, design. And they even have other designs that they've <laughs> borrowed, such as from Norman Villalta, the Deacon boot, etc. Uh, now, it doesn't really bother me that much, but when I sent them a review and they read about it in the written article, yeah, they told me thank you and they never spoke to me again. Which, uh, yeah, for me that was not very cool, but not that I care. Really nice shoes. Uh, I, if my collection was not that big, I would still keep them and wear them. Uh, unfortunately, I think I will let them go. And I think 120 US dollars plus sipping or whatever, uh, plus shooters if you want, uh, is a fair price. So if you're a UK 8 or a US 9D, uh, hit me up and uh, we'll work on something. Very nice shoes, uh, especially for that price point. Is it wear? Uh, really nice design. I've gotten quite a lot of compliments when I wore them. I think you will like them very much too. Let's move on. Moving on, let's begin the Carlos Santos party. So you'll probably ask yourselves, uh, why do you have two pairs of pretty much the same blue double monk straps? Well, I guess I like blue, and because they're not the same. And uh, you'll see why I have them both here. So, to begin with, both of these are Carlos Santos hand grade. Very easy to tell, hand grade, from the closed channel patinaed sole. And both are on the 401 last, so, same shape. Both are double monk straps, both are bluish in color, but that's where the similarities stop. So, to begin with, this one is Norte Patina, so this is dark navy. While this one is light Norte Patina, so it's a lighter shade. If you see them under the light, you will see that this one is visibly lighter, and even more when you are outside, you know, in natural light. Uh, what's also different is the model. So this one is the classic 6942, uh, which has a regular cap toe and regular stitching overall. And you can find these either uh, sort of like in stock or via the patina service. They're very popular. This, on the other hand, was a group made to order. And uh, its main difference is that it is a different model, it has a different code, and with slight aesthetic differences. But the main difference is that on the cap toe, and as well as the side, you will see that the stitching is different. Uh, I do call it reverse stitching, but the proper way to call it is probably folded, because it's folded uh, inside. So it gives a really, really nice, clean look to it. So, after having all of these and have, uh, having so many shoes, I ended up liking the Light Nort a bit more, because it's a bit more special and I love wearing them. So, these are the ones that I will be keeping. I love wearing them. You can see how much the patina is developing after wear. I think it looks phenomenal. I love them. And uh, I will be keeping these, so let's put them aside. These, on the other hand, I've had them for about two years now. They have seen, I don't know, maybe ten times wear. Uh, the full retail price was 420 US dollars as a part of a group made to order. Uh, but since I have two, uh, what's the point? Uh, I think that I can let one go. These are UK 7.5 and, and will fit you if you are a UK 8 in, say, Carmina Rain or a US 9D in Allen Edmonds. So you can have these for about 150 US dollars plus the shoe trees and some shipping but definitely under 200. Uh, you are more than welcome to uh, come to me with an offer. Moving on, I will speak about a boot that is uh, more expensive. It's actually retails at 600 US dollars. However, I'll uh, keep it a bit more compact and talk about the ones I want to get to sell first. So after you show the last two, I will continue the trend. So this is a pair of boots that I don't usually wear or go for. Uh, this is from a Swedish brand called Project TWLV, Project 12, short. And this is a, what's called a Royal Logger boot uh, with a sort of like sandy beige suede, actually waxed suede. So they're quite the tankers, as you can see. Uh, they have this uh, grayish tint to the leather. The, the nap is almost non-existent. It's really, really short. The leather is very good quality. 
and at the front and the back and the sides uh, it's uh, waxed so it's really really strong waterproof and <laughs> this is not something that uh, would be bothered by rain by snow or nothing else they also cautioned inside uh, they're you know tall they're sturdy and they have a very heavy duty sole which of course will be cleaned up before they get sent I think I've worn them these maybe four or five times simply because I mostly wear suits and more formal clothing uh, these are really really good uh, unfortunately it's been difficult for me to find a new home for them because 600 US dollars new uh, but I'm looking for about 120, 180 200 US dollars which is one third of the price for what's pretty much you can see new boots uh, round uh, waterproof tough sole tough leather and these are UK 7 so a US 9 a US 8D will fit you perfectly uh, if you're interested I have them with the original box and I can send more pictures uh, they are great especially in the US where people like service boots and uh, more rugged aesthetics this will look great with uh, selvage uh, please help me find a new home for them good shoes uh, very good quality like great construction uh, I think you will enjoy wearing them they're quite comfortable as well now I will be very quick and brief about these uh, because these are unworn and new and you've probably seen them in a group made to order video made a few months ago uh, this particular model is sort of like a semi quarter brogue uh, from Carlos Santos Handgrade. They are unworn. They are on the 462 last, so a really nice soft square and a border shadow patina. Uh, I have two more shoes like these. Uh, one is a hole cut that you can see in the previous video, and one with a Balmoral Oxford and a croc print on the top. All of them are UK 8 and will fit you if you're a US 9D. Uh, perfectly or a UK 8 in say Carmina Rain and these are unworn pristine they would cost you 420 US dollars new I am willing to send them for as low as 330 so I have three pairs of shoes uh, whoever comes first gets them first so let me know and those were pretty much the ones that I'm uh, looking to sell and some of them are more questionable if I'm going to sell them so now we continue with more of the regular video and we will talk about Carlos Santos again and uh, we'll start with some boots and one of my favorite <laughs> designs so this is what I would like to call the famous or infamous Carlos Santos Salway and uh, we say Salway S for, for Santos and Alway because this is pretty much a copy of the famous Edward Green Galway which pretty much every brand in the world has copied by now and uh, I think very few do such a good job as Santos for this price point which is uh, what 329 US dollars and this particular model is a little bit more special because of the color of the last and because you know it was a group made to order for my shop in different colors and this one is here this field boot is on the 401 last so it's a bit sleeker it does have a dynite sole and what I like the most is the color which is what's called petro shadow it's very hard to show on camera but it's a uh, sort of like a mix between green and blue it has this really beautiful in between tint which we call sort of like teal and it's really visible mostly when you're outside or under direct sunlight it's such a beautiful color very rich the leather is surprisingly you know holding up so nice I'm not looking forward to uh, selling these boots but I can entertain an offer they are in fantastic condition and they will come with shoe trees so if you are a UK 8 or US 9D in Allen Edmonds uh, let me know with an offer I might entertain them I might not uh, really nice shoes I look forward to wearing them again during the colder months wherever I am and here is one of the pleasant surprises of uh, group made orders I've made in my shop at the Noble Shoe uh, this is a twist on the previous boot so twist of the field boot you can still see the other green sort of Galway design here uh, instead 
we have an apron here and well not exactly a split toe at the front as you can see uh, there is there are visible marks so it's like reverse stitched underneath i still call them split toe boots uh feel free to you know chastise me <laughs> but i don't care uh, it sounds better and this particular model has some differences from the previous one uh, this is bordeaux shadow patina so it's burgundy it comes with a ridgeway sole which uh, I found a little more durable, a little bit grippier and not as thick as a commando sole and the 445 last, which reminds me of the Edward Green Galway lasts I think it looks phenomenal and uh, you're pretty much a confirmation of that because uh, this has been a group made to twice and it has been one of the best sellers in fact it was so good that it will be uh, sold in stock at the Noble Shoe for 329.29 US dollars, probably. In one or two months it will be in stock. Uh, these are not for sale. I really, really like them and I love wearing them. And when boot season is you know, in full swing, I will love wearing them again. Moving on. So this is a bit of a stranger one for me because until now, I never had really a lot of suede shoes, and now suddenly I have three. And because it really baffles me how these types of shoes are not more popular. What we got here is the classic Carlos Santos mainline 7902 Chelsea boots. You can find them pretty much everywhere in patina colors, especially at the Noble Shoe in Guimaraes, or you can get it in any color you want via the patina service. However, there was also an option where you could get these uh, in this dark brown suede color, which is pretty much a staple. And uh, for some reason it was not selling very well, so I removed it from the shop, but I still have one for me. And let me tell you what, uh, after wearing this for 30 times, like in the space of one and a half years, I love them. The suede is fantastic, the leather is holding out really well, the 401 last looks great and fits my foot very well. Uh, they're very easy to slip on, uh, slip in and out. Uh, the sole has years of wear in it left. And the color is so versatile and easy to match with a more casual shoot, with uh, chinos, with uh, jeans, and the sole as well is, is really lightweight. This is a very, very lightweight shoe. And these are not for sale, actually. I, I really enjoy wearing them for the moment. I'm really surprised by the quality of the suede that uh, Carlos Santos uses, and it's from uh, Charles Steed, I think, from the UK. And everything is just really, really good. I really like the design of Carlos Santos here for the Chelsea boot. It's not the classic U-throat uh, gusset. Uh, very good shoes. Uh, I really like them. and. I wear them very often. Now we move on to our second and probably last two in one and the reason is because they pretty much have the same function and because both of them have shearling lining as you can see. So let's begin with these. I'm not sure how I would call them. Uh, they're not, you know, jumper boots or sort of service boots. Uh, they're just plain toe boots, pretty much. A uh, very heavy duty, but they do have a few unique characteristics that I really, really like. So first of all, as you can see, full shearling lining, including the footbed here, and uh, you know, five eyelets and a couple of straight hooks are really easy to to get in and out. And the most unique part of this is that the first time that I worked with uh, kudu antelope leather and specifically dark brown grain kudu leather. So it has very unique characteristics and uh, signs of wear and signs of uh, the animal's uh, you know, life in the wild. Two, three, four, last, very nice for this one. A very nice, strong, heavy duty commando sole with a storm welt and what Santos calls Norwegian here and uh, a natural welt as well. Uh, these are really, really good shoes. These are great for winter. In fact, they were really popular, so I'm bringing them to the Noble Shoe with and without shearling lining in case, you know, you don't want that. Very good shoes. Uh, when it's really cold or where I'm going somewhere where it's really cold, I, I love wearing them because 
the shearling acts as a nice cushion to my feet and it just feels nice and warm and fuzzy and comfortable. And let me show you the other ones as well. So these are also something I don't really wear or make often. Uh, these are hiking boots, a bit more modern style hiking boots, as you can see. So a bit more different lacing system here. Still the same uh, speed hooks in a silver color, again, shearling lining. Uh, same last, uh, a bit different commando sole, and of course a storm welt. Uh, the difference is, is that this is calf leather, it's not patina, so it's sort of like a mid brown sort of chocolate color. These are not available anymore, I had them in the Noble Shoe, they were discontinued. I might bring them back as a group made to order, uh, or maybe in a different color, let me know what you think. Uh, since I have two and I will move moving to Italy, I might look to see them go, this particular one. And this one was a, what was it? A seven and a half UK. So it will fit you great if you are a UK seven and a half or a US eight and a half D because of the shearling lining. Uh, you can send me your offer. Uh, the new price for this was about 350 US dollars. Uh, they haven't seen much wear. Uh, there are plain toes, so of course the creasing will show a bit uh, more, but they do come with shoe trees and after uh, some nice polishing at the tip, uh, they will be fantastic. Really nice shoes, comfortable to wear, same thing that applies from the previous ones. Now we move on to another Carlos Santos groove made order that we made in the shop at the Noble Shoe, what was it, a one and a half year ago maybe? And a very surprising style, again, I call them Lazy Man. Lazy Man. And why? Because this is a Lazy Man Oxford. And why it's called that? Because while it resembles an Oxford, the laces are, well, fake pretty much and decorative. And you can see here on the side, it moves. It's a sort of like a rubber side gusset. Think of it like the one you see in Chelsea boots. So what this does is that your foot can go in and out and slip. It's a slip on pretty much like a loafer and this is for perfect for traveling or that day where you can't bother to you know lace your shoes or whatever it still has a nice medallion and wingtip design with more of a balmoral here and the broguing everywhere and it's uh this one this one is in Guimaraes color and the 387 last which is one of my favorites and Carlos Santos is doing a great job with lasts for this price point uh, it has seen uh, a lot of wear, but it's in great condition. This might be back as a group made to order uh, next month, we will see. And uh, I'm not sure if I will let this go. Um, you can let me know what you think. Uh, I, I think I will keep them. The only thing is, uh, you know, these were so comfortable. I took them with me to Italy. Uh, like I took only two pairs of shoes and this was one because it was so easy to get on, in and out on the, you know, in the plane. I were very comfortable. The only thing is that it was a downpour, like heavy rain, and some of the leather here got oversaturated and bulged a bit. So oh, I might reserve these for a future video where I will treat it with a saddle soap and iron them a little bit so the creasing disappears and goes back to normal. Uh, so might as well. Uh, unfortunate, but uh, you know, if I had conditioned the leather a bit more uh, before I went there and uh, I knew that it would be rain, they would probably hold up nicer. Really nice shoes, love the color, love the shape, uh, they're really comfortable and uh, I think I'm going to keep them. <laughs> if you have noticed until now, uh, well there have been no black shoes until like right now and for a reason, because I don't really do black shoes. I don't think you need that many, I don't understand the obsession of men with black in general. Don't get me started about black suits, they only have one specific purpose and that's funerals, uh, being a waiter or a black tie. Anyways, black shoes, still super important, I think every man should have at least one pair of good black oxfords in uh, his wardrobe. And I have the best one I need, like I don't need any more. This is the Carlos Santos hand grade, you can see from the bottom, they've seen some nice wear, still holding out really, really good. And this is an exclusive to the Noble Shoe. And why is it exclusive? Well, the 445 last, phenomenal last, 
not too aggressive, not boring, not round, something in between, excellent, uh, fine black calf and as you can see they're holding out really really good. I love the toe shape and uh, the leather is in excellent condition. Carlos Santos has excellent calf leather, dyed le pre-dyed leather and people maybe don't know it uh, so I'm happy to show it to the world. What makes this model again unique is the folded stitching on the cap toe and the sides and everywhere else which make this really unique because the next price tire that you will find something like this is Enzo Bonafé which is really expensive and actually I think these look better and I think John Lobb did something like this too or was it Santoni, it doesn't matter in any case you can find these in black and dark brown at any time at the Noble Shoe for 420 US dollars they're phenomenal and uh, I can only recommend them if you are on the hunt for a nice formal clean black Oxford or brown. Now we're going to move on to, well, to the US via Spain again. So we are going to my first and only pair from Cobbler Union. So a company based in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and they're making their shoes in Spain, like most companies. And this was quite a recent review and you can check it on the channel. Uh, this is a classic chaka, so two eyelet chakas with a bit of a rounder last. This is the 312 last, uh, quite uh, spacious and roomy. This is again not something I usually go for because I like more chiseled approaches. But for this particular model, which is meant to be worn with uh, sort of like jeans and chinos and more casual wear, I think it works really well. Uh, especially since not everyone likes, uh, you know, chiseled toes, uh, especially in the US, uh, where they like the more classic approach. This is a really nice uh, boot and versatile and the uh, suede, as I mentioned in my review video, is really, really nice. I need to get new trees for these. There are some small uh, detail and styling elements on the side that, and then on the back that make them really nice. There is a nice sort of reddish burgundy lining a wine red lining. There is a storm welt making them a bit more waterproof and a really heavy duty Vibram rubber sole. They're very spacious and comfy and uh, if you have wider feet or you're just looking for comfort in your shoes and longer wear I think this will suit you well. They even have well a quilted, a quilted uh, footbed here so it has a bit of a difference. It feels a little bit more uh, like a cushion Good shoes, nice laces, overall good quality, especially if you get one of these during sales, they are, they're really, really good. And if you're in the hunt for, you know, such a style, then I don't think you can go wrong with Cobbler Union overall. So, good shoes, I'm keeping them for now. Now, <laughs> where did these come from? Well, so these are French, then again, made in Spain, uh, from French brand Chetiem Largeur. I have a review on my channel as well, which I will link. And these are very, very special. Not only because these are Jodhpur boots and my only pair of Jodhpur riding boots, but also because of the really, really bold and unique uh, patina. So the story of this is like, uh, I wanted to get one pair of shoes from Chetim Larzeur. I didn't have any Jodhpurs and since I, my collection is pretty much complete, I wanted something bold, so I asked them uh, what sort of patin do you recommend or do we want and we agreed on this one, which is the V026, I think. It's sort of like an emerald green patina, it's very very bold with heavy burnishing and it's really hand painted and you can see inside and in some areas that there is some excess uh, coloring that's part of the charm. This is the 174 last, a bit more squarish with uh, closed channel soles and actually wood pegging at the waist, which is really cool. You don't see this often, especially at those prices. Um, the leather holding out really nicely, especially for a plain toe boot. They fit really nice, very comfortable, true to size for me. And it's a really nice style and a good alternative to Chelsea boots. Of course, you, you don't have to get this color. You can get any color you want or a more traditional color. 
But I think riding boots are really good and underrated and look, it's just a plain toe boot and it looks really nice and formal if you want. They are great. This is the Ernest model. I really recommend Septium Larger around the three, four hundred dollar mark as well. And uh, you should check them out. They're really nice people as well. So I'm a big fan of James Bond and I'm a big fan of Crockett and Jones lately. So, I mean, two things I really like match together for, uh, you know, sponsoring the Bond movies. And last Friday I was at the premiere of No Time to Die. And I can tell you that it's been a fantastic film with a lot of action and emotional connection. But it was also very surreal and nice to see shoes that I own, but I also retail in the Noble Shoe, so in my shop. And as you will also see, this is my only other black pair, my only second black pair of shoes from my collection. And the first one was the Oxford, and this one is a more of a derby. And it's a plain toe derby called the Highbury with three eyelets, so not your traditional design. Three, four, eight last, nice soft square. And it comes with a city sole. I actually really like these and they're a little bit uh, grippier than, you know, than a leather sole and it can hold up to pavements and everything much better. What surprised me with uh, Crockett and Jones, even the main line has been usually their black calf, their waxed calf. It just feels nice and smooth and uh, it has overall, you can see, creased quite nicely for a plain toe. The 348 last is uh, is really nice for my fit. Though I must say that maybe because of the shoe trees, I'm not sure, uh, this part in this shoe, like the right one, it has pushed inside a little bit and it bothers uh, the bottom part of my ankle. I'm not sure why, I need to research it more. But overall, the 348 is an exceptionally good fitting last, uh, one probably in my maybe top 10 that I've tried. Very nice shoes, very good leather, great shape uh, and uh, overall very nice, more formal derby. Uh, I, you can't go wrong with Crockett & Jones. You can find this at the Noble Shoe at any time, as well as all the other ones that uh, are in the No Time To Die movies. Very good shoes. I will be keeping them for the time being in case I need a nice black shoe and not an Oxford. Off we go to Hungary, and uh, we're going to talk about Vash Budapest. Very interesting brand. I had been itching to try them properly for the longest time. I did manage to get hold of these this year, and there is a review in the channel. Uh, this uh, is pretty much one of my favorite styles of shoes. This is an austerity brogue, so the broguing, let's say here, is not really broguing, it's fake, but it imitates a wingtip design. And uh, these are really, really nice shoes in dark brown museum calf, come with lasted shoe trees. They're on the U-last, so a nice soft square. You can see the pattern of what I do here. And uh, the sole, the uh, JR sole, is really, really heavy duty. Very nice. Uh, when you, you can spot a little bit rougher around the edges and certain points, but when you consider that these are five, six hundred US dollar shoes that are pretty much fully handmade, like hand lasted, hand welted, and when they are, they have been on sale pretty much for over a year now. Uh, why, why would you not? Why would you not try them? They are fantastic, and they have a lot of different lasts. Their MTO system, which these came from, uh, is phenomenal and extensive. You can see that uh, the leather has been creasing a little bit more, me at least on the right part. But then again, my right foot is a bit more special with a higher instep. Overall, great shoes, uh, good fit for me, and uh, honestly, you would be mad to get Mermin Linea Maestro over these during discounts and sales. Like, if you did, you need to rethink your life choices. This is one of the best value for money that you can get uh, at under $500, even less when it's on discount. Absolutely phenomenal shoes. They have been a bit uh, more difficult to work with or, you know, talk to uh, with their, uh, I'd say, customer service. But uh, it's really, it's really worth the shot. Very, very, very good shoes, very high quality and uh, extensive customization, especially during sales. 
uh, these are not for sale. We're moving on to Singapore and uh, one of the three surprises of the year for me. Like one of my new favorite shoemakers is Gio Shal from Singapore, though they're making the shoes in China. But don't be fooled, these are really high quality shoes for what you pay. So for uh, $800 or what these cost me and uh, made to order with all, all the optional extras, you get a pretty much handmade shoe and I got one with amazing spade soles, metal toe tips, lasted shoe trees, hand painted, and hand stitch apron, and very high quality, like reverse suede from Charles Steed, uh, what is it, Janus suede, and a beautiful design overall. So, EOSL, as I said, brand from Singapore, uh, they do very niche stuff. Their own shoes are really great, especially if you get the base models, you get a lot of bang for your buck and the customization is endless. What surprised me most is the fit. The fit for the ready to wear SG65 last, for me, keyword for me, is incredible. It's, it's one of the top three, one of the top three that I have. In fact, they were so good and comfortable. This is the only other pair I took with me in Florence, Italy. Phenomenal shoes, they fit so good. The, 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 the suede is fantastic, a really, really nice snap. Uh, you, you can see a little bit, uh, you know, hand-stitched details and uh, hand-stitched uh, nuances and inconsistencies here and there. But for the price you pay, these are fantastic. I can only recommend them. Check out the review, both the video and the written one. These are not for sale. I will wear these until I cannot anymore. Phenomenal shoes. And we move on to the second and last shoe from Hungary, uh, which is a brand called Passus. Quite a new brand, but uh, it's a very, very interesting brand. And as you will see, this is a very interesting model. Uh, this is a pair of Chaka boots, but it has such a lot of unique features that it's just, it's phenomenal to look at. So first of all, these are pretty much handmade shoes. Passus makes handmade shoes. Anywhere between $800 and $1,000 uh, with uh, also a made-to-order system. And uh, they have some very interesting and aggressive last. This is the 2000 soft square. So why is this unique? Because it's a chakabut and it has four eyelets. It has a soft square last, a very chunky, aggressive uh, commando sole from uh, Vibram. And uh, of course, it's dark green suede. So. <laughs> This model is called the Oliver X. It's a very, very interesting model. I really, really like wearing it. And I think that the dark green is a very versatile color to wear both in shoes and tailoring and clothes in general. Uh, this color might not be for everyone, but it doesn't mean that you have to. I'm here to talk about uh, the quality and how I feel. And these are hand, hand welted, hand lasted and very very nice overall shoes with excellent quality suede uh, this uh, last fits me well half a size up uh, the laces are good quality and most importantly for me first there is no pull tab and the shaft here the, the top part is unstructured so i don't get any pressure at all on my ankles oh i wish more companies did this and they have a lot of uh, excellent uh, models, uh, smaller collection and quite a bit clean, simple website. But if you're on the look for uh, a nice classic or a bit weirder, bolder pair of shoes, any of the two, or made to order, then you want to step up a little bit from uh, Vash, for example. Uh, this uh, is a company that you should uh, have in mind and you should definitely check out. Great, great shoes. I look forward to wearing them as much as possible. And believe me, they look fantastic with jeans. Welcome to the big daddies. Now we're up to the thousand dollar mark and one of my three favorite shoemakers in the world, Antonio Maccariello from uh, Naples. This is an Adelaide Oxford in navy patina called the Hastatus 2. And uh, it is it is a marvel. I got this during a, some discount sale in another shop. It has soft square uh, last, phenomenal, with a plain toe but a punched medallion toe. And of course the youth throat of the Adelaide 
in by, by material and sort of by color it's still navy but it's pin grain so it has a very very tight grain pattern beautiful soles with a nice fiddle back look how beautiful they're wearing and they have years and years of wear left in them lasted shoe trees Overall, uh, um, Antonio has improved the designs on the calf and everything in the last few years because these are about three years old. So uh, I think they'll be holding out really well. And uh, you can customize again everything mm -hmm. through his made to order program. If you're around the hunt for like a thousand dollar shoe, give or take, try his Argentum uh, ready to wear line. It's absolutely incredible. One of my favorite shoemakers of all time. Absolutely phenomenal shoes. And these are not going anywhere. And now to what is probably at least tied for my favorite shoemaker of all time, at least for the last one and a half years, Paolo Scafora from Naples, who's friend with Antonio Macariello actually. And this is very, very unique design. This is a double monk boot with a Norwegian welt and a very unique design in a, such a beautiful dark brown uh, color which is called Antiquid uh, Vietricolf comes with boot trees uh, with uh, this beautiful sole of Paolo Scafora and these have been worn quite a lot but you can still see the embossed logo is still holding out really really nice and there's a bit rounder beveled waist not exactly a fiddleback Beautiful shoes, beautiful shape. This is the R-Last. Uh, they're wearing beautifully and um, it's just it's just a marvel to look at and just wear and just have on display. But most importantly, wear. These are meant to be worn. This model was a group made to order at the Noble Shoe, so for around 1,500 US dollars, including everything. And right now, at least uh, during the video, you can find them as a group made to order as well for the same price. They might be in stock later. Keep an eye. This, this for me is the benchmark when it comes to shoes, high-end shoes in design and attention and pricing and what they offer. Fantastic shoes. I just love them. Uh, one of my proudest and favorite pairs in the collection. So we move on with yet another pleasant surprise for the year and this is Norman Villalta my only pair for now which is the Calder Derby in Maron Mediterraneo really beautiful dark brown color with a little bit of hints of reddish I love these shoes uh, if you haven't seen my review about them go check them out the mirror shine is still holding out great the leather is phenomenal I don't know if just the last fits my foot so well which it does but the leather is phenomenal beautiful shape low profile beautiful shoes and really nice soles holding out really 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 well uh, this is a sort of like a wingtip Balmoral Derby, you would say, four eyelets, so a bit unusual. The wing tip at the front, uh, lasted shoe trees, uh, beautiful laces. Uh, this is an exceptional piece of footwear. Probably one of the nicest leathers I've seen around for this price point. And if you can hop into a group made to order, I strongly encourage you. Uh, I actually have something on the works for the Noble Shoe, so like a three exclusive pairs that will come in the future. And I do have a pair of shoes coming up, you know, in, in a few months from Norman. Uh, they've been a pleasure to work with, to talk with, and their work is phenomenal and a breath of fresh air in this sort of like saturated industry. Phenomenal shoes. I can only recommend them really, really strongly around the thousand dollar mark plus minus. Talk about unique shoes. This is my only, and probably only that I will have, pair of Stingrays and my only whole cut Oxford. So I've already covered these in a previous uh, video about Stingray in general. Uh, as you can see, uh, it has a very specific 
texture and feel to it and these have been worn 30 times probably in a year and you can see that they don't really crease uh, they rack pretty much as new <laughs> it's phenomenal sole is wearing really nice has a really nice shape uh, these are fully handmade by Mafte Vienna uh, who's a legendary bespoke shoemaker uh, but he does make a few ready-to-wear pieces and when I saw this in my size uh, when I met him last time I could not resist and it's a work of art uh, the thing with this particular last is that uh, in the end uh, after a long wear it sort of pinches my toe here so I wear it only for more special occasions now and because of the leather it's really really tough so you know um, I save it for when I really want to make a statement. This is not everyone cups of tea, but uh, if you're looking for a pair of Mafte ready to wear, whatever the leather, whatever the construction is, I can really recommend them, even for uh, bespoke. And for the ready to wear and made to order, you can always contact me at the Noble Shoe and I can make your wildest dreams come true. Great shoes, they're not for sale. I doubt they will be for sale. Uh, they are something else. Waterproof, indestructible, uh, they, they, they don't show wear, very low maintenance, fantastic. Uh, and one of the hardest leathers to work on. Great shoes. I absolutely love them. Lastly, the most exclusive, expensive pair of shoes that I have and will probably have for quite a while now. And one of the things that has and will change my life this is the Stefano Bemer Tradizione collection this particular model is the T6456 um, wingtip Balmoral Oxford on the S last very nice soft square and this model will set you back anywhere from 2000 to 2000 I would say 400 US dollars fully handmade very beautiful pair of shoes I wear them on my most special occasions or when I want to make a statement or when I want to show I mean business this is in dark brown museum calf uh, the design is great the profile of the shoe fantastic uh, they fit me really really well they fit uh, narrow so I would recommend half a size up you can check my video on them lasted shoe trees quality there is even a wooden box with accessories that comes with them uh, the only thing that I've noticed is that they are a bit harder to take a shine so the leather saturates quite easily so you need to be you know a bit more careful not to over apply any polish uh, when you shine them and I would shine only the, you know the front and the quarters and those kind of areas uh, they have been uh, how do you say they have been creasing a little bit more than usual but maybe that's the shape of the last uh, I mean they do use good leather uh, but uh, I don't know it is a bit excessive and exclusive for $2,000 I would encourage you to start more with uh, their more classic uh, collection for around 1000 to 300 US dollars and begin with that uh, this is fully handmade and this what you see here is what I will learn to make when I study bespoke shoemaking in Florence next year. So I will be making shoes like these by myself. Very exciting times. Uh, this pair holds a very special place in my heart because of the price, because of the fit, because of the history and the heritage. And uh, because it reminds me what I will be capable of making by myself in the future. Uh, this pair is of course not for sale and will not be for quite a while i hope you love them and uh, that pretty much concludes my collection so it's time to sum things up let's move on so that was about it i hope you really enjoyed the video well the problem was that i recorded and forgot to plug in the microphone so i had to do it again so the things i do for you in any case i will not lie this has been quite uh an interesting experience first of all because I got a chance to reflect on my shoe my shoe procuring journey and my shoe journey in general and uh, reflect hey did I make the good choices or uh, what could I have done differently or this brand maybe surprised me maybe this one didn't 
and overall I would say that most of the choices that I've made I'm really really happy with. As, as you can see the collection is uh, shaping more towards the high end so I'm trimming it towards the high end but I think I did make the right choice to begin with more entry-level shoes and entry-level brands even though they're expensive for, more, for most people they're still entry-level but as you move up you will learn to appreciate the construction and the leather and the little details while at the same time familiarizing yourself with higher end shoes or better shoes than you're used to and understand hey uh, maybe I should not buy from Zara again and I should buy these and they will last me pretty much forever with good wear with almost like what 20 shoes that I have here I can rotate them so much that I will pretty much never need to resolve them. And this is a collection that is going for at least three years now. You don't need this many. In any case, there have been a few brands that have uh, astonished me uh, in a good way, some that haven't, and those are the ones that have been sold already. But what I can tell you is that I'm really staggered and surprised by how good Carlos Santos is for the entry level. It has everything you will need from the quality, the variety and some beautiful lasts that you will not see often in that price point. And they are still, as you can see, the bulk of my collection and my daily drivers. Then you move on to the higher end and you start appreciating the little handmade details from, say, Yosal or Vash. And then I thought, you know, will I like uh, a Goodyear welded machine made shoe that much? And here comes Norman Bilalta to, to to breathe like you know it's like a like a breath of fresh air in this saturated industry, and astonished me with the leather and the fit and the design. Or then the exotics that I have, or the bold patinas that I have. Uh, there is a special story and a special connection to at least most of them, and I really encourage you to take a step back and not think about what you want about what you actually need. Start small, get a core collection of the basic good stuff, start from the lower end and work your way up and eventually you might end up with something like this or even more. Uh, it is a very fulfilling journey and uh, I'm very happy that I have found my passion for life and as you can see soon I will be able to make these myself and hopefully even better and I will be sure to record and make some course and show you what will be the process behind making a handmade shoe. As far as it goes, uh, my surprises for the year, Carlos Santos, Paolo Scafora, Antonio Macariello, Io Sal and Norman Villalta. Uh, one of my favorites, like you cannot go wrong with any of these for any price point. So that concludes this very, very long video. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it and you had the patience to go through. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, press the notifications button because I spent a total of six hours making this hour long video for you. And I would really appreciate it. As, a, as I said before, sorry about the lack of content, but I'm in the process of moving to Italy. But when I move there, I hope there will be a lot of cool stuff coming up. So give me a break. And that's about it. Let me down in the comments below which is your favorite, what have you tried, what do you want to try, uh, what would you recommend me to get or uh, review next, and uh, I will try to do it. Until next time, stay dapper, stay healthy, and stay tuned for one more dad joke. So I often tell dad jokes. Sometimes he actually laughs. <laughs> and that's a return back to form with another corny dad joke to end up the video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.